Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the blues man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be sharing some thoughts on the 2013 Carl Lynch film, 47 Ronin. I absolutely love this. I finally got it on DVD uh, just a day ago as of the time of this recording, and I fell in love with it from beginning to end. Stunning visuals, just action-packed, a great heartening story and everything like that. And it's interesting to me because if we go back to when the original teaser trailer was released and then the follow-up trailer, I was really largely apprehensive. I am very familiar with the 47 Ronin story, the actual historical event in Japanese history, and its cultural ramifications. I've always been very intrigued by uh, the honor system of the samurai and Bushido and all of that kind of thing. So I was I was kind of expecting going in, hearing that a movie called 47 Ronin was being made, that this was going to be something sort of The Last Samurai-esque, and that it was a fictionalized account, but it hearkened to the reality of the situation as closely as possible, whereas this is something quite different, and... After I kind of got over that realization, I just fell in love with what they decided to do. I very much, I think, predicted in a sense that what it looked like to me at the time via the trailers, uh, I basically summarized it as being like a sort of big screen modern adaptation of a, a kabuki play telling the story of the 47 Ronin. And I, I stand by that. I think after watching the film, that's exactly what we got. Now, of course, the film primarily stars Keanu Reeves, but also features Hiroyuki Sanai. Taranobu Asano, Rinko Kikuchi, and Ko Shibasaki, among others, many others. And um, I, I love that Hiroyuki Sanada has a very uh, sort of, you know, matched presence to Keanu Reeves' character Kai. He plays Oishi. He is basically the, the sort of head samurai um, under their, you know, their leader, their master. And uh, you may recognize him from such movies as The Last Samurai, of course, um, as well as most recently that I've seen, The Wolverine. He uh, was sort of the father, the bad guy father of uh, Wolverine's love interest and everything like that and that. And it, it was really awesome, you know, seeing a recognizable face and someone who, if if you watch, you know, the special features with the film, you find out he had a lot of input about the Japanese way, the, the samurai way, the culture, and that's awesome. It lends an authenticity to the film and the presentation overall, even though it is a very fictionalized, fantastical sort of fantasy interpretation of the real events, the, the honor and, and sort of the focus, the base of the story is still very much intact. So, essentially, you have this Lord Asano, who is assassinated by a rival lord, and all of his samurai, you know, are, are basically set free. They become leaderless samurai, and they become ronin, essentially, which is uh, what you call a samurai without a master. And after about a year of all 47 of these men kind of going their separate ways, they all had, you know, been given an order that they will not seek revenge for this. They cannot be allowed to. But they all harbored this sense of honor of wanting to, uh, of Avenge their their Lord and Master's death. So they all have this similar base concept that we're going to wait as long as we can. And then when this you know rival Lord is least expecting it, we're going to take out our vengeance on him for the loss of our Master and regain our own honor, regain our Master's honor as well as our own. And essentially this was carried out. They then committed seppuku, which is essentially uh, a sort of samurai suicide. They rip their you know midsection open and this is what restores their honor. And so this this movie very much presents that story uh, in, in, as I say, a very fantastical way. There are witches and demons and giant beasts and monsters and uh, sort of like ogres and stuff like that. You have Keanu Reeves playing Kai, who is a half-breed, as the movie calls him. Uh, essentially, he was a child runaway of this sort of secret clan that was out in the mystical woods and uh, he has this very naturalistic sense where, like, if they're tracking a beast, he can sense which direction it's gone and everything like that. He's very uh, able to observe his surroundings, but also he has a feeling, a, a sort of um, empathy or something that goes otherworldly, you know, as far as how the character is presented. And it was interesting for me because I've seen a lot of movies with Keanu Reeves in it, and I felt like this was the most unlike Keanu Reeves I've ever seen. I actually bought in 
to this character having an otherworldly sense to him, sensibility to him. And there's a point where he actually shows some level of ferocity. It's very sort of, uh, and I don't mean to be contrary with this, but it's a subdued ferocity. And it's very interesting to me because as the story would have it, he's an outcast. Uh, he suffers for it time and time again, but his loyalty and his concept of honor is very much in line with the rest of the samurai. Oishi goes looking for Kai because he figures Kai is going to be the one to help get everyone back together. Because now Oishi has no uh, sort of recourse other than to listen to a warning that Kai told him just before their master died. Kai had sensed that there was evil, that there was a witch about, and it looked like something was going to go down. And of course something did go down. They lost their master. And so now it's a year later and he has to confront the idea that, hey, Kai was right. And so, you know, one by one, step by step, each of the samurai who looked at Kai as an outcast are becoming more and more, you know, sort of accepting of him. And by the end, they all decree that they will write down their names, they will tell their story of what it is they plan to do, and they all sort of make it a blood oath. They they slice their thumbs and they press it by their names and everything like that. And Kai is actually welcomed to be the 47th who signs the document. So essentially, you know, they, they carry out that plan. Whereas in the original real world event, it was very much more personalized and there wasn't a big extravagance of army versus army. They do that in this film and I think it works perfectly with how the film has gone from beginning to end. And um, all throughout, you also have this sort of romance, this unrequited love, as it were, that I think the addition of just adds a, a nice spot to the overall flavor of the story. It's almost a forbidden, you know, sort of romance. And it's just really, really an awesome film from beginning to end. Absolutely up my alley. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And otherwise, I'll catch you all later. Peace.